Okay, so Eddie, I've got to try to decide on what color to paint Miss Kitty's shirt. I was thinking maybe either like Christmas green or this real red. And uh, you're good with colors, so what do you think? That's, is that too close to the background, do you think? Uh, I think it would stand out. You think it would? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm thinking about that to bring that in. And uh, is Teresa through prepping my recipe yet? She's almost. Oh yeah, that's gonna be pretty. If I can just stay in the lines. Look, I had to put that uh, glue stuff on my, oh my gosh. So Teresa, you got everything ready? I'm getting there, what are you doing? Well, I thought while you were doing that, I would just pick up the brush and paint a minute. Well, tell them what, they're, what you're doing painting. Oh, okay. Okay, so the cameras are rolling, right? Yes. Okay, yay. Hey, y'all. You know, I'm like everybody else, just trying to keep occupied and finding something to do. And I have to tell y'all, one of the most fun things that I have found to do is sharing recipes with y'all. And from what I hear, y'all are enjoying it. And that makes me very happy. Uh, and I had asked y'all, excuse me, I got gum in my mouth. I'm gonna take that out. <laughs> uh, I had asked y'all to send in requests if you had anything special. Well, y'all, y'all replied. And so the recipe I'm gonna share with y'all today is a chicken and rice casserole. And you know, I've never been much one for casseroles. Uh, I like for my proteins to kind of stand on their own. But this recipe is so incredibly good. Uh, I made it one day last week. And you know, my Aunt Peggy's here. And I had been cooking her good meals, trying to get some weight back on her that she had lost since she's been down in her back. And she told me, she said, Paula Ann, that's the best meal I've had since I've been here. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> Cause she's never been a casserole person either. So I, a week later, I'm making it again because I know that's one thing I can get her to eat. And y'all are not gonna believe how easy this is and how delicious. So come on over to the kitchen, y'all. And, uh, now, I know this looks like a lot of ingredients. I know this looks like a lot of ingredients, y'all, but it it's really not. Thank you, Teresa. You did a grand job of prepping everything for me. Thank you. Oh, no, thank you. Um, so, I'm using, y'all, the recipe calls for a rotisserie chicken, which you can roast one off yourself, or you can do like I did. Like Eddie did, he went to the grocery store and just picked us up a rotisserie chicken. And I think the recipe calls for like three cups. And uh, so we just picked the chicken off the bone. Uh, we did cook some rice. It calls for two cups of rice cooked. Uh, okay, e English peas, these are frozen. Parmesan cheese, this is for the top. Uh, Parmesan cheese, this is for the middle to go in the casserole. This is rotisserie chicken, that herb. This is heavy cream. I don't know, maybe a third or a half a cup it looks like. I can't remember, but I- don't I, know, this is a recipe from the magazine. Yeah, this is a recipe from the magazine. So I do have it right here, it's in this issue. And it's the cheesy chicken and rice casserole. <laughs> I always feel like I'm cheating when I do casseroles. That's crazy, isn't it? Uh, so let's see what that is. It, this is a half a cup of dry white wine, a fourth of a cup of heavy whipping cream, one and a half cups of grated Parmesan cheese divided, 
one cup to mix in the casserole and a half a cup to top the casserole with, one tablespoon of flour, uh, three cloves of garlic, a uh, fourth of a cup of butter, one cup of red bell pepper, one and a half cups of chopped sweet onion. And y'all, I, I have, we've got a little produce stand here in Savannah called Davis Produce. And uh, they work so hard down there. And our son Anthony uh, went down there the other day and he called and said, uh, do y'all need anything? I'm at Davis Produce. And I said, well, Anthony, honey, I'm out of onion. And uh, he said, okay, they got them. And he said, they're the size of my head. <laughs> well, I said, oh no, I go through them real quick. Six, six onions. And he said, six, are you sure? <laughs> well, let me show them to you. <laughs> He brought me six onions. <laughs> Look how big. And Teresa, these are called strawberry, strawberry onions. onions. They're so good, y'all. I've been just cutting them off and dropping them down in my fryer over there. Those are the sweetest, best onions. So I just wanted to share that with y'all. All right, we've got two cups of long grain cooked rice, black pepper and salt, and uh, that's it. So all we have to do, just getting everything ready is, is the hardest part, and bless Teresa's heart, she did it for me. So I'm gonna turn this on, and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cook everything and then put this in the oven, because this is oven proof. So I'm gonna melt my butter, and I'm gonna toss in my bell pepper, I'm gonna to toss in my onion. And while that's sauteing, I'm gonna come over here and wash my hands because um, I walked right by the sink and didn't wash my hands after I was doing my painting. So I'll do that right now. I hope that y'all are all uh, being safe and not taking any chances because like I said before I want to see y'all when I come back I want y'all to be here all right so we're going to saute this I'm going to turn that up a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and add the garlic so our heat can Get that wonderful garlic just exploding through those onions and peppers. So you can see this is a this is a real colorful casserole. I love the fact that it called for red bell pepper. Um, so y'all, um, <clears throat> I told y'all we went to Albany and got my Aunt Peggy because Albany was having such a time with that virus. So uh, we got her here and she is down in her back. So yesterday, uh, the orthopedic doctor okayed for her to come in to the office and have a procedure done. And I, so I took her in, Eddie, Eddie and I both took her in and she came through the procedure. It was an epidural and uh, one done with x-rays. And she did so good. She did have a, some of the symptoms that they said she might have. But I have, I've quarantined her to her bed. You mean side effects? Oh, yeah, side effects. What did I say? Symptoms. symptoms. <laughs> Well, they said that those symptoms. I don't want to make, think yeah. she has something worse than that. No, she does not. Thank you, Teresa, for keeping my tongue straight. <laughs> uh, so anyway, she did have some side effects. So I quarantined her to her bed. And uh, she loves seafood. She loves fish and shrimp and crab. So I cooked her 
I sauteed some flounder for her lunch and took out there and uh, she almost jumped out of bed. <laughs> she was so happy about that fish. So she's doing well. And we're staying safe. When we went to the doctor's office, they they will only let so many people in, you know, at one time. And Aunt Peggy and I went in our, with our gloves and our mask on. And we were the only ones in there besides the staff that had that on. But I said, that's all right. We're safe. We're safe. All right, so the onion is starting to get a little transparent, y'all. Mmm. Did you, any of y'all taste this fish? Eddie, Teresa? I did. Oh, look, it's so good, so moist. Um, Michael actually caught these flounder here at the house on the dock. Mmm. So Michael, Michael said the other night, he said, <laughs> you know, we may go broke, but we ain't going hungry. As long as we got that buffet out there. <laughs> in that river. <laughs> so, that made me feel somewhat better. <laughs> okay, so now we're just gonna start adding all the ingredients. Now, I did not measure out, or Teresa didn't measure out the salt and pepper. So, I'm gonna do that. And it's like, a teaspoon of kosher salt and half a teaspoon of black pepper. So that's probably about what I, what I put in it. All right, so here we go. I think I'm gonna add the chicken next. I'm gonna cut this down because our onions and peppers are they have cooked as long as they need to cook. All right, so, uh-oh, I'm gonna do this before I go any further. I'm gonna sprinkle a tablespoon of flour. And that tablespoon of flour is gonna help thicken our ingredients up. So all you wanna do is just stir that flour in you want to stir that in before you start adding your liquids. So this is perfect. So we can start adding our liquids. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and add our rice. I'm gonna add our poultry seasoning. We'll add our peas, peas, peas. I like those little frozen peas. Oh, so I wanna to talk to y'all about chicken stock. I'm not a big fan of chicken stock that you buy in the cartons. To me, it's so, it's just weak. It doesn't have a lot of uh, flavor to it, like a wet base. And you can find these in the soup section at your grocery store. And they come in all different flavors like beef, ham, vegetable. And I love, love, love this roasted chicken stock. So I dissolved one teaspoon of my wet base into a cup of water. And you can see how pretty and strong that cup of base is. And if you poured it out of a carton, you would see that it was not, you know, as strong. All right, so I'm gonna wash that out with my wine. Now I'm gonna add my heavy cream. Okay, I'm gonna cut this back up a little bit because I put those frozen peas in there, so that's gonna chill it back down. All right, so I think the only thing we have to add now is uh, that cup of Parmesan cheese. 
but I'll turn around here and just check. And that's it. That is it. And our casserole is done. And it's going straight in the oven like this. And I'm gonna stir that Parmesan cheese in. And then I'm gonna spread that other half a cup on the top and let it bake for about 25 minutes. Uh, the temperature calls for 450. And if you do that, you're gonna have to be careful because 450 is a hot oven. And you'll want to make sure that you don't burn it. Now the recipe doesn't call for this, y'all, but uh, I would love buttered uh, breadcrumbs on top of this. And to do that, I'll just get my white bread and tear it up into little pieces and melt my butter in my skillet and toss those crumbs in that butter. That's way, that way every crumb gets some butter and sprinkle on top of it. Uh, but that's just me because I like a little crunchy. But I think this is ready, y'all. Doesn't that look good? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go exactly by the recipe because I want y'all to see it as is. But remember, you can, if you're like me and you'd like some kind of topping on it, feel free to do whatever you please. Because, you know, I've told y'all through the years, the first time you make a recipe that's been given to you, um, do it exactly as the recipe calls. And if you like it and you plan on making it again, then um, the second time, make it your own. You know, if you don't like bell peppers, don't put them. Put celery or carrots, whatever you want to do. Uh, but I think y'all gonna like this one just the way it is. So I'm gonna put it in the oven and I will be back to show y'all the finished product in about 25 minutes. Okay, y'all, as promised, I'm back to show y'all the results of that cheesy chicken casserole. Now I've chopped some fresh parsley and I'm just gonna put a little bit of that on it for garnish. And now I'm gonna taste it. It's still so hot. I mean, this is straight out of the oven. And uh, look at the steam. I'm fixing to burn my mouth, y'all. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, you wouldn't believe how good it is. See all that cheese? Mm -mm -mm. You wouldn't think something this simple could be that good, but it's out of this world. And I'm not going to dip anymore because you know what? I see supper. <laughs> Got to try it, y'all. Hope you're going to love it. Love y'all. Oh, and don't forget. Don't forget it's in uh, the May, June magazine. So it, this is on the stands right now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If you want to see the, the recipe in print. So that's it. Cooking with Paula Dean. May, June. <laughs> mm. It's so good.